And before you say, I haven't seen that palette since 2014, I think maybe you need to ask yourself, is it possible that you just time traveled and it is 2014? When's the last time you look at the calendar? Hi, welcome. I'm Hannah. Are you sick of videos that are new and exciting? Are you sick of clicking on YouTube and being like, ooh, I really want to watch that? That sounds like something that tickles my fancy. Well, this is the video for you because I have a video about a palette that no one asked for. I've had this in my collection since it came out in, I think, 2014. And I, I'm going to be doing like a roundup video about all of my makeup that I've kept for nostalgia's sake soon and kind of try to like declutter that collection to being a reasonable amount of things that you don't use that you hold on to, you know? But first I thought it'd be fun to kind of revisit the Naked 3. I know some of the pans are popped out, so I don't want to hold it too haphazardly, but I wanted to kind of revisit and see how bad it is kind of. And I know some of that is the fault of it being like eight years old, but I also know that like the quality that I was happy with at that time is not the same quality that I would expect and cherish at this point in my life. So I want to do something kind of similar to this with my single shadows and just see how my today version of this palette compares to many yesteryear's version of this palette. So we're going to switch over to my hands and kind of go through my singles together. It's not going to be an exact match. I'm not going to waste my time trying to find the exact perfect taupey pink to match every one of these. I don't even think I have that many. I mean, maybe I do. <laughs> but we're just going to kind of like be inspired by the general theme and see what I come up with. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to be building my little palette in here. I grabbed out pretty much all of my single shadow palettes that aren't all in frame, but they're all... They're all in my line of sight, as well as a couple of pre-made palettes that I feel like might have a little some something that we could pop out, and these are magnetic. I think of this palette as being so, like, dingy and cool-toned, and I mean, it kind of is, but it has a lot of pinks in it. I remember at the time it was like, ooh, this is their rosy palette. But like, I think of something like like the second Patrick Ta palette as being like a rosy palette because it has like actual warm tones. And this palette is just so taupey pink. Yeah, I'm going to start looking through my um, palettes and see what looks good. Oh, this is hard because I feel like there's a lot of like maybes. If this stack of single shadows is making you anxious, me too. I'm going to start sticking them in here. I actually kind of wish I didn't do that because I'm going to run out of room and I'd like to like put in the ones. Whatever, we'll figure it out. This pan doesn't want to come out. That's annoying. Yeah, other pans will click. Oh, there we go. Okay. I was going to give up. All right. So the thing here is I feel like we have, like, I don't really have this kind of, like, gray, dark, taupey area really represented. And we have a lot of kind of, like, mid-toned, taupey pinks. I do want to keep the right number of shades. Ideally, they would all be like smaller pans, just none of the 36 millimeters. But I, I do like some of the shades that I have in the bigger ones, and I think I might end up doing that. Okay, let's see. I guess I can grab out a cream shadow for that one. Okay, even though I don't really set my brow bone anymore. That used to be a big selling point to me, to have a matte cream shade, and you can tell that I hit pan on that because I used it every day. This is called Distressed from ColourPop. It's a really old bone colored matte. And then I'm so sorry about this big. 
I feel like I need um, a big empty magnetic palette to use just to like push these around. For the deeper end, I am going to stick in the shimmer. This is Chocolate Bar from Sydney Grace. Just because I want, I want to make sure we're going from light to dark in here. And then I guess because I don't have that many dark ones, it's easy to see Veil Nebula from Terra Moons. This is a really interesting kind of like purpley, browny, multi-chrome shade. But I feel like it works as a good replacement for like, you know, those kind of shadows in there. And then this one also I want to stick in for the deeper end. This is Unexpected from JD Glow. For the lighter end... I have this Give Me Glow Matte. It's the shade At The Beach, and it's a very light transition color. I need to kind of establish whether or not this is even, like, useful for my collection. But I'm deciding if I want to use this one in place of this matte here, or if I want to just replace this bone color shadow with it. I think I might do that, actually. And let me separate the other mattes. Yeah, it's funny with these old eyeshadow palettes, too, because there was such, like, a shimmer heaviness. I feel like with mattes, they're less exciting, in my opinion, and you kind of have to know more about makeup and about creating shadows and things to appreciate them. And when this came out, I didn't care about mattes. I think like, I remember when I first learned about transition colors and I was like, okay, that makes sense. But if this was a matte heavy palette, it wouldn't have appealed to me. But I've also come full circle because it still wouldn't appeal to me if it was a matte heavy palette because I feel like I know enough now about how to use makeup that I can create shadows using shimmers or I can just like embrace the look without shadows. I don't know. Just, just some ramblings. So for the other mattes, we have this one here called Limit and then this one here called Nooner. And I think I have comparable shadows to them, but since I'm using that light taupe in place of the bone, I want to create a little bit more depth with these two mattes. So, like, I have this one that would be pretty good for Nooner. I mean, it, it would actually work pretty well for either of them, huh? But I don't know if I want to use it, is my point. Maybe I will as the lighter one, actually, and then I can create some more depth in place of this one here. So this is Embrace from Sydney Grace. And then for the darker one, I don't think I need this amount of darkness. I don't think this would create enough depth if I had it as my darkest matte. I think I'm going to do this one. It doesn't look that much darker than the other mattes I already have, but I know it is more pigmented. This is Cherry Cocoa from Glaminatrix, and I believe that will be all of our mattes then. Okay, so we have the three darkest shimmers taken care of. We have the three mattes taken care of. If I'm following the format of this palette, what I'll need is one, two, three, four, five, six more shimmers. I am excited about all these shimmers that I picked out, and I want to make sure that I have enough of a range that it makes it an interesting palette. I want to do something that's kind of like light peachy pink that I could do on my inner corner. I think I want to go for this new Davina one. This is the shade Verdant Frost, and it's kind of like, like a peachy gold, but it just looks so bright on my inner corner. My appreciation for it has grown since I've seen how special it is in the inner corner, and I definitely want to include it and use it. So I'm going to knock out this Peachy Keen. I guess I'll knock out Meteorite also. This is a pretty light shimmer from Terra Moons, but... I don't think I want to keep it so light in my palette. Okay, the next step up. I think I want to go for Opulent by Cleona. This shade is just so gorgeous. And I feel like even though there's not a really exact comparable shade in the Naked 3 palette, I feel like it fits the vibe really well of what I think of the Naked 3 palette as. And then two more shimmers for the top row. I'm going to take this one out of the running. This is Pink Linen from Luxy, and it's not my favorite shade from them. It's the kind of shade I need to consider decluttering. It was one of their manufactured shades from early this year. And like seeing it with these other shadows, I'm like, I don't want to put this in this palette because I know I'd be disappointed using it. And that's the exact kind of thing I'm trying to get out of my collection. So we will definitely consider that one in an upcoming declutter. Maybe it'll be easier to do these two darker shades that I'm missing first to complete the bottom row. I don't know, I need two darker shimmers and two lighter shimmers. I pulled out these more rosy tones, these deeper ones that really aren't in the Naked 3 and I thought maybe my vision of it would include it and I'm not totally crossing that out yet. I also grabbed a couple 
more dimensional shadows. This one's carving from Cleona, which is like a really interesting tealy shadow that's definitely not in the Naked 3, but I thought maybe mine would include that. This is also Koala Hugs from Menagerie. This isn't my favorite shadow from them because it's not kind of like pow enough. The rest of this chameleon collection was so good, but this was the one shade that I wasn't crazy about. And I think I will take it out of the running, but I like the idea of it. I think I will take these berry ones out. And I think for my bottom row, I will include carving. And I also want to go for this adept one that I popped out of the Plain Jane palette. This is ACI2. That one's kind of more of a taupe. Okay, so we need two more lighter shimmers out of these. I really want to include one of the Moonscape shadows. I grabbed this one that's more of like a champagne called Air Glow, and I grabbed Pink Flare, which is more pink, and I think I want to go with Pink Flare. I don't know which spot of the last two shimmers I want that in yet, though. And then we have room for one more. I could make this bolder and include something like Empress from Cleona. Oh, that would be really pretty. Another option is something like Siren, is that called? Yeah, Siren from Sydney Grace, which doesn't excite me as much, but it is a nice color, and I feel like color-wise it works. I want to go for Empress. I want Empress. That shade impresses me the most. Ha ha ha. Please don't leave my video, I'm sorry. This palette is nothing that I would have come up with on my own, but I'm excited for it. And I think swatched out, it's going to be those kind of like absolutely delicious neutrals that I love so much. I was halfway through putting the other ones away and I'm like, maybe I'll tell you what a couple of the other contenders were. So I'll tell you what the last couple are that I still have out. This one was Jolt from Pretties for Your Face, which, and this one was really kind of like PC and pretty. This one is, ooh, Mystic Moon Pie from Davina. This is one of my favorite shadows ever. It's so shimmery and just like amazing, magnetic. I love it. This is the shadow that I popped out from the Sydney Grace and Temptalia palette. This one's Blaze from Cleona, which I think would have made a good contender if I wasn't using Empress. This is Asteroid from Pretties for Your Face, also one of the shadows that I enjoyed in that video. And we have the Monarch from Luxie, which was a contender for something a little darker, but I think we have the darkness covered. And this one, sorry, it's not focusing. And this one is way warmer than the ones that I ended up going with. Okay, I'm really excited to swatch these out and kind of like see how they look in swatches, having not touched them for such a long time and being so much more acquainted with wonderful eyeshadows nowadays. I'm not going to bother reading out the shade names because like, I don't think you're gonna go buy this palette. And it's not like they're available as singles or anything like that. Hopefully this is in focus. That one has nice pigment, a little chalky. Those two mattes actually felt kind of nice. Shimmers are obviously disappointing. <laughs> You know, as I said in the intro, I don't know how much of this is from it being old and how much of it is just like, that's what we expected of shadows at the time. But I mean, I just can't believe there was like a time where I would use shimmers that look like this and be like, yeah, that's what shimmers look like. And I know that some people who don't want like, you know, their lids to be so vibrant <laughs> or so loud, maybe some people still like this kind of thing, but I'm just comparing it to my own personal experience. And my experience is that like looking at these nowadays, I'm like, I could use any of these as a matte. I would blend any of these into like my crease or my outer V to build a look and then top it with something else. This last dark shimmer did swatch kind of nice, but like as a matte. Okay, time for the comparisons. I'm really excited for this part. Okay, we have Give Me Glow at the Beach. Davina Verdant Frost, Cleona Opulent, Sydney Grace Embrace, Davina Pink Flare, Cleona Impress, Glaminatrix Cherry Cocoa, Cleona Carving, Adept ACI2 from the Plain Jane palette, JD Glow Unexplainable, Terra Moon's Vel Nebula, Sydney Grace Chocolate Bar. Wow. Look at the difference <laughs> between those two palettes. You know, again, it wasn't meant to be an exact comparison, and it's not, 
but I think that they are the same vibe. It actually didn't get as dark here as I thought it might be, but I think that's still enough contrast for me. I have options that are much lighter and options that are much deeper, but just like the quality of those shimmers, amazing. Like I think that really shows what I mean about like these not even looking like shimmers at all. And these just being so gorgeous. And I think At The Beach does have enough pigment to show up on me as a transition. So yeah, let's switch over to my face and I wanna make a look with my new little palette. Okay, I put on a little bit of my Anastasia eye primer, as I do. I'm a little torn about how to use this palette. It's so gorgeous, but I feel like realistically, if I was using this, I would probably choose one shimmer, maybe two, to like wear all over my lid. But like, because I'm filming it, I want to do more than that. I don't know. The pressure to do something fun when <laughs> when you're showing it off. I also desperately need to clean my brushes, but they are wiped off, so. Okay, I'm gonna go in with Give Me Glow at the beach just for a little light transition. Yeah, very light, but it does do, it does do a little something, but. Also not my normal crease brush, but I use my normal crease brushes for red yesterday, <laughs> so. I am gonna deepen the crease a little bit. I'm gonna use Cherry Cocoa from Glaminatrix to give it a little more dimension. And I think I might wanna go a little bit deeper with this look. I might need to switch brushes to melt those together a little better. I love this Glaminatrix shadow, but it, it is powdery. Oh, that's funny. I picked up my next brush to use, and this actually is the Naked 3 brush. I really like the Urban Decay brushes, so whenever I've gotten a palette, the brushes always outlive the palette. I'm gonna take Sydney Grace Chocolate Bar, the dark brown, and just use that as a building block in the outer corner to add depth. I feel like this shadow doesn't work in the way that I want it to. Good to know. I probably should have just replaced this one with a matte. I know sometimes when I do these videos, I just filmed a Kesha one that's probably going out before this. I will compare the um, the palettes on my eyes, but I just know these are so different. I know there's there, like there's no point in it because it's also not like I would keep and continue using the Urban Decay palette. It's also not a vegan palette. And that kind of grosses me out to put like beetles on my eyes. <laughs> so there's a lot of different reasons. But yeah, the Urban Decay palette is still in my collection. And however long it remains in my collection, it's for purely nostalgia. It's not something that I'll be using. Which is why probably after I kind of round up my nostalgic makeup and do a declutter of it, I think I'm going to count those items out of my inventory just because like, if I used up every other eyeshadow palette and I still have the Naked 3 palette, I don't have any eyeshadow because I'm not going to use that as eyeshadow, you know? Okay, let's do something else. I'm going to take Veil Nebula and add that pretty much where I added Chocolate Bar. Maybe a little farther in. Because I'm not trying to blend this one. I want the shimmer to be a uh, part of the look. So pretty. I like this shadow because I could use it to kind of like darken up the outside of a look, but also it would be gorgeous front and center, whole lid type of thing. Next, I think I want to do carving. I wasn't sure if I should include this one because I feel like of all the shadows, it's probably least the spirit of the Naked 3 palette. But like this is my Naked 3 palette if I was in charge of designing it today. And if I was in charge, I would say, put all the budget <laughs> to a shadow like carving and just make it one shadow and not a whole palette. That's what I would say. Just do carving. This is one of my favorite shadows ever. I wasn't sure if that was gonna take up the rest of my lid, but it looks like I put it all over my lid. I'm going to clean up my face and everything, put on my face makeup, and we'll come back for my inner corner and lower lash line. Okay, we're all cleaned up and let's let's get into the lower lash line first. Carving is so good. I feel like I wanna 
get a little bit more colorful in the lower lash line. Like I think if I had all of my shadows in front of me, I would do maybe like a bright matte blue or something like that on my lower lash line. I've been kind of into that recently. But because we are working with a palette based off a very neutral palette, made slightly less neutral, but still not completely unneutral, we have limited options. I'm going to first go in with this matte here, which was Sydney Grace embrace and use that as my like transition for my lower lash line oh that looks so pretty down there i love when shadows like that can be like built up and they look like a color but also i know i could use that in my crease i feel like i've never really gotten completely like my wits around my sydney gray shadows because a lot of them i'm disappointed by like like the chocolate bar like the dark brown for example but that one's a really good one. Um, I digress. I think maybe my inner half, I'm going to do Impress from Cleona because that's kind of the boldest pinky color I have. Looks a little more messy with that there, but I'm into that. I also know that if you're putting shimmer on your lower lash line, you want to make sure it really stays in place. You can use like a glitter glue or something like that, but I just feel like that takes the fun out of makeup for me. In general, I don't really like using glitter glues. I have one. Maybe I'll use it when I use glitter. I don't know. And then I'm going to go back to carving and use that for the outer half of the lower lash line. Cool. I like how when it's not in the light, it just looks kind of like, like a brownie burgundy. Cute. And then on my inner corner, we are going to, of course, go in with Verdant Frost from Davina because I've been loving this on my inner corner. Just like look at how that glows. <laughs> Cute. It's like a sun. It's like an orb in my inner corner. All right, cool. I'm going to actually finish up this look with my eyeliner, my mascara, my lips, stuff like that. And then I'll be back for final thoughts, outro. I'm really feeling this look. Look how cute. I really like it. I really like the pop of like pink on the lower lash line. I like how carving on the lower lash line doesn't even stand out until I turn my head. Ooh. I really like this look and I probably wouldn't have come up with it had I not been trying to better recreate my naked palette. I also feel like if I didn't do carving, any of those other shimmers would have also looked gorgeous in this look. It's just like, they're just really nice. They're really nice shadows. I really like them. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I just used like a regular old bronze eyeliner. For my lips, I used... ColourPop Oh Snap liner and then I topped it off with the e.l.f. lip balm in Tough Cookie. Cute, cute little combo. I'm really happy with this. This was fun. Let me remind you of what my palette looked like verse, versus what the Naked 3 palette looked like. Very different, but I think you can see the inspiration. And I don't know, the way, the way that I really like this look that I wouldn't have necessarily come up with without doing this exercise makes me feel like maybe I want to incorporate like duping palettes that I don't have that maybe I don't even want and making them better just as a different way to look at the shadows that I already have. I don't know because like I've done that before for palettes that I want that interest me that either I don't want to buy for whatever reason maybe they're not cruelty free or vegan and I mean it's always good it's always good when I look at my single shadows in a different way and use them because I have them because I love them so when I use them I'm going to be happy with the outcome but it's just different ways to like keep my collection fresh and I'm really into that so I'm keeping Naked 3 in my collection for right now but we will talk about this farther whenever I get to filming with my nostalgic makeup and we'll kind of decide its fate there. But 
I'm so happy that I did this today. I hope this was fun to watch. I hope maybe it inspired you to look at your single shadows in a different way and create something that you wouldn't have otherwise. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. There's always way more single shadow content on the way. And thank you so much for being here. Bye. Just do carving. Just do carving.